Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Joining me now is our in-house analyst, Nena Hugo, with stories trending around the world. Hi, Nena. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I'm well. How are you? Okay, good. So <laughs> what's trending? Well, the Breakfast Club's Charlemagne the God sat down with Kanye for a candid yet rambling interview that addressed some of his recent controversies, those including making inflammatory statements on Twitter, as well as a number of his older beefs that he seemed to be getting under his skin. First, Beyonce and Jay-Z not coming to his wedding with Kim. If Lemonade hasn't taught us anything, it's that the married couple was truly going through it during the time Kardashian West had their nuptials. But he doesn't seem to feel that's a valid excuse. Quote, respectfully, I have to say I was hurt that they didn't come to the wedding. I understand they were going through some things, but if it's family, you're not going to miss a wedding, unquote. Regardless, Kanye says that he and Jay are on good terms and they text often, although they haven't physically seen each other in some time. Also, Ye revealed his true feelings about him feeling some type of way about President Obama, calling him a jackass in an interview. While he met with Donald Trump, plus his thoughts on Virgil Abloh's recent appointing to Louis Vuitton. Let's hear what he had to say. He had so much stuff to deal with. He couldn't deal with a, you know, wild card like me. I think that's too unpredictable. Someone that wasn't being controlled by strategy and thoughts or someone who's acting on feelings. Um, we knew that already up to that point, though. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Kanye was being very vulnerable in this interview. Like, he touched upon a number of different things, which um, I think people were waiting because he was going off. Yeah. He had been, you know, Twitter had has been, you know, all over him. And then, True. you know, losing his, how many followers did he lose? In like Eight what? million followers. Eight million followers. You know, and he's always been a very controversial guy. And somebody I feel like is not too much married to the words he says. Like, he's somebody that changes, you know, changes constantly. He's always evolving. So mm. I think our people are taking, yes, his words to heart because, you know, you're saying it, so you should take ownership. Yeah. But more so than he himself actually is. Yeah, that makes yeah. Sense. I, I, I like that he was vulnerable in this interview. Mm -hmm. I mean, do we all want to get to know Kanye better? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if this interview was necessary, but he touched on some things like we said, uh, the wedding, his yeah. wedding and um, Beyonce and Jay-Z not attending. And I can understand how you feel hurt. Mm. I feel like, yeah, yes, they were going through all the challenges, but Jay-Z is his friend, like, they're close. They're like a brother. He's like exactly. his older brother, you like know? He brother. brought him into the game. So yeah. I can see how he was hurt, you know, about yeah. that. But again, we saw that they were going through all these challenges they were going through, so... Mm. Uh, yeah, I guess the wedding wasn't important to them. But let's talk about that one comment he made. Oh, on TMZ. On, that made, that got everybody upset. That slavery is... Was a choice. Was a choice. I don't agree with it. I think you agree with it, Nena. No, and you're about to come under some I'm major not, flack. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not agreeing with it. I'm saying there's two sides to every story. So slavery is a choice. It can be taken... Okay, slavery wasn't really a choice for people... You know, did they ask, hey, do you want to be shackled to a, you know, a boat and transferred like thousands of miles across the ocean? No. But I think it's more so being a slave to thought and being feeling um, you have to feeling you have to like uh, abide by certain things that someone is telling you to do. And he's saying that that type of decision is self-inflicted. But that's not what he said. So he didn't mm -hmm. say it like that. If he said it that way, nobody would be upset. Mm -hmm. But he literally said, slavery is a choice. Meaning, oh, you could have decided not to be shackled and thrust off to America. You could have decided to fight. Mm -hmm. You could have decided to... And it, it doesn't work that way, you know. Mm -hmm. It doesn't... Because from everything I've read and everything I've seen, they, they started with the minds first. Yeah, it's, started... it's, it's so, it was psychological and then it was systematic. I mean, we have laws in place that, you know, enabled slavery to exactly, exist. Exactly, exactly. Yes. So mm -hmm. him saying slavery is a choice, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know he should be saying stuff like that, especially like a, as a black man. Yeah, and I think a lot of times, like, you know, Kanye will say things and he will be thinking about it, but just sp spurt it out and not say, not, uh, not articulated in a way that's understood. I, yeah. I mean, I, th I, think, I think he has a lot to, you know, That's not much all. How many of us say the first thing that comes to mind? I mean, we're, we're not this supposed is true. to say the first thing that comes to mind. We're supposed this is to true. Think Acknowledge he, he has a platform exactly. and he should, yeah. Exactly. Anyway, what else is trending? <laughs> well, in a new interview, Serena Williams opened up about her relationship with husband Alexis Ohanian Sr., explaining that he, what attracted her to him. 
The tennis star who, st who shares daughter Alexis Olympia Ohanian Jr. with him says, quote, ultimately, I wanted to be with someone who treated me nice, someone who was able to laugh with me, and someone who understood my life, and someone that loved me, unquote. Serena says that oftentimes she talks to her husband about race and the injustices that black people face. Quote, literally, I tell Alexis, well, you know, there is such a difference between white people and black people. It's interesting. I never thought I would have married a white guy either. So it just goes to show how that love truly has no color. End of quote. Aww. You know, I, well, you, we love Serena. Yeah, Serena, <laughs> she is, you know, it's an athlete. She's like a superhero at this point yeah, in time. She is. Um, she is. She, she seems to have everything going for her. She does. She has the career. She has the family. She has the social life. Mm -hmm. Like, she seems to have everything going for her. Yeah. And I mean, like, her marrying a white guy, I don't think it should be anybody's business, you know? Are people complaining? I don't, I don't know if they're I complaining. Yeah. I think if, I don't, I think that people will always have something to say, let's be realistic. Yeah. But I'm happy that she is, you know, has her championships and has her family and is able to, you know. Yeah, and I know them. that, um, I was gonna say something, I lost my train of thought, but I think it had to do with him being white. Yeah. Um, there, there are lots of, <laughs> Interracial marriages? Interracial marriages, yes. And there are lots of reports, not reports, but like just when you're talking with your friends who have dated white guys, mm -hmm. they always say the white guys are more gentle and more <laughs> understanding. <laughs> I don't know how true it is, but they always say, yes, I don't know. But I'm glad she's happy. Yes. That's what's important. Yes, and I'm glad yes. she talks to him about what is going on. And hopefully her daughter um, understands the position she's in and... Yeah, I hope they both all the whole family makes a change really with the whole racial thing going yeah, on. I think I think they'll be fine. I think they'll be fine. Well, yeah. <laughs> more news. The federal government has banned the importation and production of codeine containing cough syrups in the country. The new impl implementations follows a documentary by BBC Africa through its BBC Africa Eye unit on Nigeria's fast rising codeine addiction. According to a statement issued on Tuesday by the Minister of Health, Professor Isaac Adayo. Daiwole gave the directive to the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control in his office on Tuesday. The minister also directed that codeine containing cough syrups should be replaced which is le with dextromorphotan, which is less addictive. Wife of President Aisha Buhari had also lamented the fast rising drug addiction following the documentary. So first of all, I feel like a lot of attention was drawn to codeine after the song. Coding Diet by one of our, our musicians mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Um, should they have banned the drug like that immediately after a documentary was released by BBC? I don't know. I think they should have regulated it. Um, coding has always been something that's been very rampant. Um, I think in certain subcultures, the use of it, the abuse of it, we've seen deaths come from it, like Tim C has, you know, has mm. passed from it. Um, Little Wayne, his routine seizures, he's yeah. also been an avid user of it. So there's yeah. always been, you know, especially in the in the rap, um, hip hop, even urban community, it's always been like a, a big thing. Yeah. So I mean, I think having a, getting a close eye on it, yes, but codeine actually is a drug that could be, you know, used yeah. to treat. Um, so banning it is a little intense, and I think it's one of those things when you ban, people want it even more. Exactly, and then know? it gets on the black market. Exactly. But then it gets more expensive on the black market. Yeah. So, like someone was saying, it's almost like cocaine. You know, cocaine is on the black market, but it's super expensive, and a lot of people cannot afford it. So right. less people are using, thankfully. So maybe codeine will also go the same route, where less people can afford it, and less people use it and we just have a healthier community and people realize that drug abuse of any kind is wrong definitely yeah and i and i'm glad this you know documentary shed light on that yeah. and um you yeah. know more people are aware about it now because it does take lives we've seen it happen so yeah, yeah. And BBC does amazing documentaries by the way i remember this is lagos i watched that like i think it was four years ago and it just showed the plight of people in a certain neighborhood in nigeria and it got a lot of people talking got a lot mm -hmm. of people active like trying to make a change so with this now i guess they've done this again and Hopefully they just regulate, they just regulate all the drugs on the market, really. They need yeah. to really check on them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is our photo of the day? Yes, well, it's that time. We got this from People Magazine, and there comes a time in the, every royal life there will be a hit of inevitable mindstone, seeing their face 
on a coin. The Royal Mint has released a new coin honoring Prince Harry and Meghan's upcoming wedding. The silver coin, which is worth five pounds, has a photo of Meghan and Harry gazing into each other's eyes, one, one on one side, and the other picture... On the other side is Queen Elizabeth. The photo depicted on the coin was taken at Kensington Palace just after Harry and Meghan posed for the photographers in the sunken garden after announcing their engagement. And even through the coin, you can see their love. Oh, yes. Yeah, so it's such a cute... Their, their wedding is going to be... It's, it's happening, what, in two weeks? So. Yeah, the wedding is... Yeah, I'm going to be there. Aren't you going to be there? No. No, you're not? Oh, okay, I'm on the battle train. <laughs> you'll, 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 be, you'll be texting me all the yes, details. Yes, I'll be texting you. I'll be update, updating you. And we can have photos from there on what's trending as well. Exactly. Thank you, Nana. No problem. <laughs> well, we are going on a short break now. Stay tuned. We've got more after the break. Don't go away.